It's, it's five degrees outside today and we've got 2.6 kilowatts of free energy just being sucked in from our solar thermal tubes on the side of the building. You can sort of build the, these are sort of, this is kind of a custom dashboard builder. We will be 100% off grid today and then we can measure the total amount of free energy that we've taken from the sun. Hi guys, uh, today we're going to be going through all the data that we've newly received from our open energy monitor system. If you haven't seen this installation, we have a video on this, it'll give you a bit more context, might be worth watching that first, I'll post that up here somewhere. And I'm just going to chat to Tristan here, analyse the data and see what information we can take out of it. Okay guys, uh, here we are, moment of truth. We're gonna have a look at the live results of what we've been installing and, and measure how our heating system works. Let's take a look. We've had it going now over the weekend, haven't we? So it's collected some good data. Excellent. So is this, uh, is this your own app or how, where did this app come from? Yeah, this is Emon CMS. This is part of the Open Energy Monitor system. Um, and it's just the application where all the data goes to and then we can visualize it and see what's going on. And can I make my own add-ons to this if it's open source or how is, is, or is it open source because you can put in any data into it? I mean there's just a software that's open source so yeah yeah, th yeah you can develop and ex do different things to I it. can't um, but if I yeah, could yeah, if you I want could, to yeah, yeah. yeah you know you could or you could just pull the data out of it and integrate it in your own yeah. like dashboards or something you know. What we've got here is We've got some sort of standard pre-built dashboards and the main one I think that's going to be, I mean the, the one that sort of looks the best that, that we can really dive into here to start with is this heat pump uh, dashboard. Because obviously we've got the heat pump here and then like you say the solar thermal. This is just over the weekend now, we've got two and a bit days of data mm. and it's it's looking really good isn't it? Yeah well I, there's no way I'd have expected that. So. We've got very old single panel radiators installed upstairs. We haven't upgraded them for the heat pump yet. It's, what temperature outside today? It must be around six or seven degrees. It was one degree when I was driving in. Uh, let's <laughs> have a look. Okay. I think you can see that actually there, the, that, the way it's, the power output's rate yeah, there yeah. overnight is because it was so cold. Right there. So at the moment, it's five degrees outside. And the COP at the moment, so it's five degrees outside and at the moment it's 3.5 COP. And that's at 40. Almost 44 degrees, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's incredible. By the time we get that massive radiator in and upgrade the radiators upstairs, we're going to be hitting over five, I would say, uh, during this time of year. Yeah, it's going to dip to four, three, you know, late threes when it's minus three, but it's minus three very rarely. It's this kind of temperature a lot more often, and we're going to be hitting over five. I think we could hit, be looking at a near five scop, potentially. And we've got a uh, cavity wall, uninsulated cavity wall. This is a very normal house, this isn't a, a special building. So um, this just goes to show what can be achieved with modern units. The older ones aren't getting, you know, even four-year-old units, five-year-old units aren't getting this sort of cops. It's an R290 unit. Anyway, yeah, let's have a little, little look more what we've got here. I don't know, it looks like you had a lower set point on the temperatures maybe over or maybe it was just it was just warmer wasn't it until it sort of got colder here yeah and then yeah it okay. cold overnight here yeah um, so what's what's the gray uh, electrical input yeah it's flow like, return and 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 heat okay so i'll just zoom in on this bit and say oh wow okay so we've got yeah electric here in blue at the bottom the heat output is the sort of yellow bit but so it seems to be it hasn't actually like properly you know, reached a set point and turned off. It's, it's, yeah. it's just still be, it's been modulating, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, right. that's good because every time the heat pump turns off, it effectively goes into negative efficiency before. It's only for a split second, but you just don't want it to have to climb up in its efficiency. You want it at max efficiency all the time. So I was wondering, why is it doing this wavy pattern? Yeah. And I'm wondering that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah, yeah. Is that a TRV? No, upstairs. all of our all of our TRVs are fully open. I don't know what that is, but without this, I wouldn't have known to look into it. So now I know to look yeah, into yeah. that and, and have a look why. Hey guys, Adam here. We're just doing the edit. I've kind of looked a little bit closer at this graph, and as you can see, it's probably only going from 36.5 degrees up to 38. So actually, this kind of wavy pattern is just the scale of the, the graph that's up. That's kind of only moving one and a half degrees. All it's doing is trying to target 37 using step modulation. So it, it can't exactly match the input and output. So it steps up by 5%, lowers by 5%. That's a step modulation. So just to quickly answer that, onward with the video. Can we plot COP on this graph so we can see what it's doing? Yeah, well, the, cop, that a function? the COP in that particular window, so in 
for that view that we're looking at is 3.77. Yeah. So uh, but it'd be good if we can get that on, yeah. a, on a line at some point. That yeah, would be I, can, I can set that up. Set that up. Yeah. Awesome. So what other data points can we look at here? Can we see cylinder temperatures and stuff? Show a couple more things on here. Yeah. So obviously as it's got colder here, the output's gone up, but we've also see, we can also see a couple of defrosts. So uh, okay. it's just overnight here. Mm. So what, what you're seeing there is the, the flow temperature is going below the return. Yes. The flow rates is all the same, so you're getting that heat mm. transfer to the back of the unit to do the defrost. What's um, the electrical output during that, that time? Oh, so, it's quite low. Yeah, so what it'll, it'll be quite low. And, I mean, it hasn't done like a huge ramp up here, so it's, mm. it is quite nice in, in that that's quite gradual. So yeah, steady, steady yeah. recovery afterwards. But I guess it is going, what, how, how many kilowatts is the unit? So it's rated output. This is a Valent Aerotherm Plus is 3.5 kilowatts, but they don't rate them the same way as any other. They rate it at minus seven, not plus seven air temperature. Okay. So at minus three, its output is something like 4.2, depending on the flow temperature. Right. So, that, so it's, it's difficult going, to answer that yeah, question. It's giving like almost six kilowatts there, isn't it? Yeah, I, this is another thing that's uh, absolutely mad. Obviously, the higher the COP, the more kilowatts it can give. It's way overshooting the stated efficiencies on the, if you have a look at their table, of outputs and what a COP they'll achieve at different flow temperatures, it's not this good. This is an incredible sort of result, really. I think they're benchmarked how they have to print their data, uh, and this just goes to show real world kind of efficiency. So, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six defrosts overnight. Can we get an outside temperature sensor we installed? Yeah, we need to get one installed. Don't we? And no, internal, we can, actually. We can actually see what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, it looks like overall it's a good result so far, isn't it? Yeah, it, well, it's got me very excited about upgrading the radiators. And seeing how far you can push it. Yeah. That's the sort of nicer dashboard that we've got kind of just pre-built already running. Yep. This is the sort of back end. So essentially we're recording a whole load of different things. Each one of these rows is a time series data feed. So yep. you know, we've got cylinder temperatures, we've got the energy by, recorded by the electricity meter, yep. the heat pump, flow rate from the heat meter up there, uh, flow and return temperatures, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then below that, we've got the solar thermal meter. We've got a cam strap on that, flow and return temperatures. And What's the 2.6? Is that its current? That's a currently producing 2.6 kilowatts. So we're getting, so it's, it's five degrees outside today and we've got 2.6 kilowatts of free energy just being sucked in from our solar thermal tubes on the side of the building of just pure free energy. We can see here overnight obviously nothing and then it's it's now ramping up this morning. This is the solar thermal? This is the solar thermal here. What's the minus? Is that a minus? I think just when it starts up you've there's some uh, like colder water in the pipe and it it sort of shifting that side. Little... Yeah, it's a very narrow yeah, time band, though, isn't it? So it's not a lot of energy. It's just suddenly there's a big difference in that delta T. On, okay. On between flow. So and if you if you mouse over this, does it show you how, what the output is? Oh, it does. So going. Yeah, two point five continuous kilowatts of energy today, um, but but so just... like that that's a mental amount. Uh, we're gonna once I don't know what time is it now. It's it's ten twenty now. Oh, what time temperature is the tank? So this is just flow and return coming from the solar thermal at the moment, so it's right. like 48. We're getting 48 degrees. Okay. 42 back, and then... Awesome. Can we overlay the tank temperature on yeah, top of this? Yeah, we can, yeah. Oh, wow. So we've got seven temperature sensors on the tank at the moment. Yeah. So the different levels. I haven't labelled these as to what, what, actually what? What level, which level they are yet, so we need to look at that. Okay, that's fine. And then <clears> uh, <throat> why is there two boxes there? What does... You can either put things on the left hat left axis. Oh, uh, right okay. Axis. Oh, that makes so, sense. So you can scale them. Yeah, so here we've got a whole lot of temperature data, but we've also got that power data on there that's yeah. on the other axis on the left one. Yeah. And so otherwise the scaling would be all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. You can see things. So you can okay. see the temperatures of the tank sort of rising there. So, yeah, the temperature tank's up to... Uh, that, that's the return temperature. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's... So, we're looking at 40 degrees or something like that. Okay, can I put the heat pump flow temperature on here? Yeah. Because if that's, when, when the tank overtakes the heat pump flow temperature, I'll turn on the solar thermal heating. Yeah, so flow temperature for the heat pump's 40.4 at the moment. Okay, we'll give it 10 minutes then, and I'll, I'll turn, if I could even turn it on now and it'll still assist its return. Yeah. And actually, we should be able to see on this graph, heat pump modulating back and the, the solar thermal just taking over and just heating the building 
free of charge. No electricity, nothing, because the only thing that the solar thermal uses is a pump, which is watts, a matter of watts. We've got PV installed here, so the pump's powered by our PV. Let's say we end up with 70% of this building heated with solar thermal today, and the remaining 30% from the heat pump. At a cop of three and a half, that's going to mean out of our heating demand, only about 7% or something like that's going to be generated by electricity. However, that 7% of heat is going to be generated by our four kilowatts of PV on the roof. So we will be 100% off grid today, provided the sun keeps shining. And actually, we'll probably be exporting back to the grid, which is amazing to see, because we've had this like as in theory in our mind the whole time. And it's a nice thing to say, but to actually see it in data is um, amazing. Yeah, we could, I, I haven't quite finished setting it up yet, but I think I've got the CT on the right cable for the solar, and we okay. should then be able to see. Well, I have got somewhere here, I've got an app, solar app, which might give us a clue, but we recently changed our uh, board over to three phase, and the electrician didn't move any of the CT clamps over correctly, so a lot of our data's been lost, I found out this morning. Let's have a look, my reserve. Yeah, none of it's working. Just maybe yeah, a, little bit, a little bit hard to see what's going on here, but that's the solar PV, assuming this is, I've got the right thing, it, it looks like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's rising up slowly, so mm -hmm. it's now 713 watts. Okay, so that would make sense. 713 watts would probably be about right uh, for this time of year because we've got a low sun angle and they're pitched at about 40 odd degrees. Put it into context, the solar thermal pump's going to take about 30, 40 watts of energy to run, so we're, we're way overpowering our solar thermal system. That is now showing solar generation compared with the heat pump electricity consumption, so we're not quite generating as much as the heat pump's using at the moment. Okay. We will do once I turn on the solar thermal assist in, yeah, yeah. in a minute, Yeah, yeah. because uh, the, the heat pump will dial right back. Okay. Can we just see how much solar thermal we got over the... Uh, can we save this graph to come back and watch this one again? Because that's, that's... I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. A really, if we can have a look at, yeah, solar thermal overlaid over... And can we title it Solar PV Overlaid Over Heat Pump? It's a bit of a long title. <laughs> it's a bit more interesting. So I've only just connected that up this morning. It's yeah, PV Over Heat Pump Power. Or Heat Pump, yeah, that'll do. Okay, quite intuitive, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this, this particular sort of interface is really powerful in that you can just bring lots of different bits of data onto it, and mm. onto it, compare what's going on, and you, know, you can also pull out stats like the mean value or yeah, difference okay. between things, minimum oh, maximum. Wow. Oh wow, this thing. is going to be so, so good for measuring like our, our setup, this is perfect. Because we've got a bit of a, it's a crazy setup to be honest. It wouldn't be something you'd put in a normal house. However, the information that we draw and glean from this yeah. will help us spec more usual, you know, kind of normal installs. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what, what comes out of it, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Can we see what, what the solar thermal drunk up over Saturday and Sunday then? Because I, I, I think the heating for the solar thermal was off over the weekend, and I know it was sunny on Sunday, so I'd like to see what the peak input... It's November the 22nd, so yeah, we're, we're really reaching peak winter. Let's see what we got yesterday. Today. I mean, today looks like it's doing quite a bit better. better. It's all started off yesterday with the same kind of curve. Shall I zoom in on that if you just do it like a drag? Oh, yeah, okay. Drag here, yeah? Yeah, that's it. So it Clear. pulses in the heat with solar thermal. It has to get the header up to temperature. And then once the, the temperature of the header gets five degrees or an adjustable amount of degrees above the bottom of the cylinder, then it turns on the pump. So you see it pulse in heat rather than just being on or off. It shifts it in. And then it has got a PMW pump, which pulse width mod modulation, which means it can vary the speed. So it can vary the speed to minimize that pulsing. But it doesn't really matter either way. You don't get more efficiency one way or the other. It seems to have come on kind of fairly constant to start with and then it's gone off for a bit maybe clouds came over yeah then it's this pulsing is kind of interesting isn't it that some of these power spikes go up to like 33 kilowatts 33 kilowatts like, of input but just very briefly you know? yeah um Whoa. And, and the flow temperature was up to like was 98 which seems like oh, well hold on wait, wow. so wait, wait, wait. is that, that is a that, 98 is degree that, is that right <laughs> Yeah, it, that probably, probably is just right, like, yeah. It's kind of got that water up to really hot temperature and then it's just pulsed the pu pump on briefly. Yeah, so it's it just cooled it down. Because temperature isn't relative necessarily to energy, because if you have a small amount of water and you get that up to 98 degrees, it's a, not a lot of energy. You could bring up a whole mass of water by one degrees and that can have loads more energy in. So that's something kind of important to understand. Obviously it's not sunny all the time, but the idea is that we store it in that big store there and then we take it as we need it. We take the amount of energy 
and any leftover we can eventually shift over to the garage. But, but also bear in mind that system has got a therm protect so it shuts down if it gets too hot and stops absorbing so essentially you can oversize your array to ridiculously too big and you shouldn't have too much issue with glycol cooking or the system boiling. We can also see just as well as just recording like the, the real-time power and the temperatures it's also keeping a tab of like the total amount of energy that's been put in over mm. that period of time. So, okay. So this is the sort of thermal. So yesterday it went from we got about 4.6 kilowatt hours of heat. Well, it's so was that on Sunday? Yeah. Did we get anything on Saturday? No, Saturday was overcast. Overcast. So total so far 7.3 kilowatt hours in on. Oh, in total in, uh, in uh, com yesterday. In combination, yeah. Okay. It looks like we're gonna absolutely smash it at last on Sunday anyway. I've just added these room temperature nodes this morning, so oh, okay. um, we can put them somewhere su awesome. suitable as well. Yeah. Hopefully get all you know the solar and then the grid import export and get some external temperatures on there. And the other thing that would be interesting is once this settles, we're getting MVHR putting probably in about six months' time to watch the direct effect of heat loss. Because uh, Siobhan sits with the window open 24-7, yet she likes it hot. <laughs> So yeah, once obviously that sort of kicks in, that should be, again, live data. Uh, can we just pull back the solar thermal generation graph we had? Total solar thermal yield. In kilowatt hours. Yeah, it, it came up to yeah about seven or something, wasn't it, over yeah. the last two days. I just want to see what it is just this morning already. It's half past 10. How much have we generated between half past 10? So it's gone from 4.5 up to... Well, it started generating at ni 9 o'clock. Yeah. So an hour and a half, we've got... 2.9. I mean, okay, nine kilowatt hours. Yeah. Okay, two point nine kilowatt hours in in an hour and a half is is pretty good for end of November, beginning of December. And then you can sort of see that as in terms of the power. Mm. So you start at zero, and it's been ramping up slowly up to two point, well, up to two point seven. So sort of average. 1.7 kilowatts so far since nine, so. Okay, awesome. Uh, right, what's our cylinder temperature now? Cylinder temperature versus. Heat pump temperature. Okay, not quite 40. I'm not gonna, I don't know whether to turn on the solar thermal. Well, Cause it's gonna assist no matter what you do. Okay. I'm gonna turn it on now. If we can watch what the, how the heat pump reacts and how it turns down, that's gonna be really interesting. Yeah. Right, bear with. Right, so solar thermal heating is turned on now, assisting. So, I, well actually we should see the heat pump dial back a little bit. Where's the graph that we made? Heat pump power versus... So how did you, how do you uh, mix it in? What's the... So they, they both pump into the same system, essentially. Okay. So the solar thermal store temperature is above the heat pump return temperature, so it won't need to lift as much. That was something I was going to ask you, actually, is would it be worth us giving a live link so anyone can come in and see this anytime? Or is that what you had in mind anyway? I wouldn't mind anyone kind of looking in, yeah. but I don't know if any if it's dangerous to give access to too many people or... Um, what we do is we get... So at the moment, this is all running off that box and, and then on yeah. the Pi. So yeah. what we'd actually do is we just get this data going onto the online server and then, right. yeah, you can have as many people looking at it then. You know, potentially we could do something like, we could integrate it into your website in some, in some way, potentially, you know. Oh, if wow. We, if That'd we, be amazing. And as we were just saying, what I'd like to do is, moving forward, especially if we do in-house training, is get a live feed on this screen and then we can alter things inside the building. We've got lots of stuff installed here and we can watch the live effects for, for training and knowledge sharing in general really so yeah if we do it online we can reach many more people which mm. is you know more feedback and perspectives are always much better and the other thing was we've we've looked out here are a lot of the kind of you know short time scales just a few hours or yeah. the last couple of days but this software is also really good at collecting that data over a really long mm. period of time and then giving you kind of a wider view so yeah you know well, uh, every day how we're, 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 monthly you know what's the what's the heat pump versus solar thermal that kind of yeah thing, we're, you know, we're quite know. lucky today with the solar thermal the, obviously this is not a normal day for late november early december so it's good that this can show the peak output just when we happen to be measuring it it's just very very lucky that that's the true test isn't it the annual annual yield of both technologies i sort of started just i mean this is not like uh, anything oh pattern, cool anything particular oh is that fancy, the cylinder but yeah that's only a two two sensor pocket cylinder at the moment we haven't got any any ones with more but oh wow um, you can sort of build the, these are sort of, this is kind of a custom dashboard builder so is that something i'm going to be able to do who's you can do this who's yeah, not very you can just 
just drag and drop that kind of thing. So it's a little bit more limited than than like that heat pump dashboard, which yeah. is doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And this is only just displaying like simple widgets. Cool and kind of metrics. Thing. Yeah, you know you can also bring in like your logo. That's amazing. Like that. This that that's currently only got two temperatures. That yeah, you can, but yeah. you've got the highest and the, uh, the top and the bottom there. I think I just randomly cho chosen two, but yeah, that's awesome. And then you can also then put onto this, let's say, one of the graphs that we've created. So, oh, awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, That's really cool. You can you can add like text to explain what's going on as well, so that can be quite useful. So. Yeah. That's, oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> it just seems all really obvious now that this, anyone that's got anything that does anything to do with energy should obviously have something like this and for other people to access it so they can compare what works and what doesn't. Sorry, how did you get in here so I can just know for... Yes, yeah, so that's just this dashboards tab. So you're top. in dashboards. Oh, this is the dashboard. Yeah. Or one of your dashboards. One, yeah, this is just one I've started creating so yeah so normally you'd go so let's say you you're on the feeds page here and then you click on dashboards and I'll just go to all dashboards so I've just created one here I haven't actually given it a name but and then that's it in a kind of non editable form and then we click on the cog cog icon here yeah do an editable version okay so what's happened here is it's now when is it now 11.33, the heat pump's backed off loads since when I put it on at 11.05 or something. It went from, the heat pump had uh, 129 watts input and it dropped down to 513 once I turned on the solar thermal store. However, the upstairs immediately overshot and turned back off the thermal store. So that's not, that's not really helping. That's why you see a little another little blip up and down here. So I'm just gonna turn off the heat pump completely and just watch to see what happens with just heating the building with solar thermal. See if we can continue to heat with it. Right, let's turn off the heat pump. <laughs> so the thermal output of the heat pump is 3.7 and then 3 and 3.7 and then it goes a bit haywire here because here I turn on the solar thermal and it's really messed with the heat pump. That's why I just had to turn off the heat pump. Now we can see what's going on and it's just going absolutely haywire. I know I'll need to put in blocking between the two so if one's firing it can turn off the other and vice versa. Or I set wider hysteresis so the solar thermal is way above temperature required so they don't compete down at sort of similar level and fight against each other. But interestingly if you have a look at this yellow line, let's zoom in on this one more. This yellow line is almost pretty much matching the amount of power required from the building or heat pump thermal input and over here it overtakes. So now I could have just turned on the, the solar thermal and turned off the heat pump at this point. I didn't, I did it at half past. So you'll see this flat line now that the heat pump yeah. has it's turned off. And we'll just heat with solar thermal and it should just maintain a room temperature of 21. We've now got the room temperatures hooked up. I haven't put the room temperature thing in here though. Okay. So uh, is it, it, we can upload that in the next yeah, yeah. while and we can overlay it over this. We could have done this from a while ago. From 11, we can just heat from solar thermal. Actually, we probably could have done it even before then because we've got all of this previous. If we turned on the solar thermal at 11, which was here, we've got all this previous solar thermal that's been stored up. Here's your baseline of zero. We've got all of this solar thermal that's saved up. We probably could have turned on just solar thermal at 10 o'clock. The flow temperature wasn't quite there yet though, so I, I just held off. We won't need to turn on the heat pump for the rest of the day, would be my, my guess. And then we can measure the total amount of free energy that we've taken from the sun. Provided it's accurately installed, you have all the variables accounted for in this, where you can't account for all the variables when you've got two buildings. In theory, if everyone fed in data via this system, you could have the best data set by far in the world for sourcing information on heat pumps and how, how they perform, or any technology. So um, that's what I find really sort of powerful about it. It's really nice having controlled the environment of a of an energy house as well, isn't it? You know, if you want to replicate particular conditions again and again and again. That's one sure. of the things I find quite difficult sometimes is when I'm trying to like, let's say with our house, we've got uh, thick stone walls. Mm. It's uh, an old stone mid terrace house. And so you've got all this thermal mass. So your outside conditions are changing, your mass, you know, how much heat is stored in the mass is changing. Mm. And then that affects what the heat pump's doing day to day. So it's like, yeah, it can be quite difficult to have. But the problem is the amount of variables. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the problem. And at least with this, the country is roughly around all the same temperature. And then you've got every type of house with every type yeah. of user all being simultaneously measured and tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got loads to do, haven't you? You better yeah, get cracking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a hand?
Uh, so I'm just looking at this data. We've been leaving it because I've turned on the solar thermal. I want to heat the building with solar thermal, and um, I, I didn't really understand what was going on. <laughs> Huh? That's not right. <laughs> right, OK, it's the end of the day. It's now 20 to 6, so we've had a full day of heating. Trishan's been fiddling around, getting anything sort of finished and putting in some extra sensors. We've got some room temperature sensors, things like that. Um, we can have a look and see if this just ridiculous heating system actually does do anything. Actually, before we do, I lowered this table down. <laughs> James Bond style -y. That's That to me is yeah. just awesome how you can see the sun, you know, arcing over in the sky and exactly at 12 o'clock, because th those happen to point directly south, pretty much our peak input of 42 kilowatts, which is amazing. 4.2. 4.2, sorry. Okay, right. so this was the heat pump tickling along. And then, That's was it. it five past? I turned the solar thermal on at 11, then half 11, saw it was going haywire and turned down off the heat pump for so it just ran on the solar thermal. And that's where you see all of this stuff. And all this up and down stuff is basically the zone valve we installed for the heat pump wasn't wired in. It was just a blank cable where we've kind of been experimenting and losing, you know, uninstalling, reinstalling stuff. It was just a leftover part of the experiment. So anyway, that's wired in. And then this kind of jittery stuff stops. Actually, let's just zoom in on that. This dip, actually, the heat pump output is going below zero because we were exporting heat. Yeah, outside. Because the zone valve wasn't closing. So then I realised we had to install this, or finish installing the zone valve. I didn't know it was uninstalled. Amazing bit of information from, from your kit there. So not only were we heating the building solely from solar thermal, we were just warming up some of the planet as well, just to keep winter a little bit more mild. And then that was eventually resolved around here. And then I just did a couple of experiments here where I was opening and closing the zone valve to make sure it worked. And as I did, the flow temperature sensor up by the zone valve there, heated up, and then it cooled down, and then I opened it again, and then it cooled down. It let in, it warmed right. up the heat, the sensor, and then yeah, it cooled yeah. down again. So those, what those, what, that's what those little anomalies are. All of this stuff here is the buffer temperature, yeah. um, essentially, which is now down at 30-ish, somewhere around that. However, the building from 11 here all the way up till 5.30, which is seven and a half hours, has been solely heated by solar thermal. No heating at all. And I'm gonna leave the, the heating off overnight from the, the heat pump. Tomorrow, I'll give you a little catch up to see what time it heated the building to overnight. So yeah, we can see here that the buffer's like, the bottom of the buffer's 30, and yeah. the top of the buffer is 30.6. That's not gonna last very long because the temperature's not that high. It's a lower grade of heat, but the, the thing is full mm. of heat. So that's gonna tick away for, away for the next hour or so which means less heat pump firing, which is always good, obviously. So yeah, the solar thermal's been... A good test for it today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. we've been lucky with been the weather. Uh, we, sunny. We've been lucky with, with the sun, but I do need to wire it in in a way where the solar thermal holds back the heat pump and mm. vice versa so they don't yeah. interrupt, because at the moment it's a manual switch. And maybe we'll give other people access to this so they can watch it, how it performs throughout the, uh, the year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this varies over yeah over the next couple of days, won't it? As... So I, was, I was checking the, the temperatures throughout the day. We had a high of eight today, a high of eight degrees and a low of four-ish or something like that. And the very first thing in the morning, it was like one. And it's uh, been so, quite mild, yeah. you know, days before, yeah, apart, well, actually, yes. Yesterday morning was pretty cold as well, wasn't mm. it? Not quite as cold. Exactly. Yeah, actually, did we, that reminds me. Oh, no, we didn't get any solar yesterday, did we? Any solar thermal. We got a little bit just at the start of the day. So we had to charge with the... The buff was pre-charged a little bit from mm -hmm. Saturday for today, and then it was. it's mainly been from solar that we got today. But, yeah, the real test, again, is over time, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Maybe one thing you could do is you can compare, like, the energy, the total amount of kilowatt hours of heat that's come in from the solar thermal today, mm. and then compare it with, say... I mean, you can sort of see it yeah. there. Like, overnight, we did... We did put an absolute, you know, huge amount of heat in from the heat pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look, th here's the buffer where we, we heated it on Saturday, and then actually it didn't lose a lot of heat between there and, and this morning, so mm. it was pre-charged to a certain degree. Yeah, right. And look, actually over that day, it's slowly stratified, but there's still energy in there, which, which we'll have. It's amazing how little the building's needed, to be fair. Bear in mind this is a cavity, uninsulated building. Got double glazing, but that glazing's poor. This area is heated by the the air to air though. Okay, so essentially we've just been very lucky today and we've demonstrated that solar thermal has a place and it can heat a building while the sun's shining. But also don't forget, we've been running the, we've washed dishes today. Harrison, the cameraman's eaten. You've eaten, we had a few others out. We, you know, we washed up and whatnot. So um, we've had some hot water out there, but an absolute success. Uh, 
And here we are the next day. Hello everyone. I thought I'd give you a quick update of the next day, how the system performed. Right, so overnight, you can see here, everything kind of dropped overnight. I'd actually forgot to turn the stat down to 18 when I left, but it was automatically sent down to 6, 17 anyway. So everything kind of just dropped overnight, slowly but surely. It didn't get too cold. And then at 7.30 or something, it was time to come on. 6.41, it's time to come on. It came on and the temperature just sunk out of the, the buffer really. So the buffer didn't really have that much energy left. But essentially, still yesterday, we were fed solely by th solar thermal and there's a little bit throughout the night to keep us running. Okay, now today, what we have was the, the, the heat pump coming on and we've started to get solar thermal again. So solar thermal this morning at 9.30 was putting in a peak of 15, 1800 down to 30. 300 watts and then another peak here of two and a half kilowatts and then since then it's basically been putting in two and a half kilowatts it's kind of a mixture of the odd bit of cloud but mainly cloud less again today and we've got a t constant input of two and a half kilowatts so uh, yeah, it's now 12 30 as you can see i've just turned off the heat pump we're going to be able to heat the rest of the day oh you can see the solar thermal jumping up here we're going to be able to heat the rest of the day with with solar thermal energy so actually i might give you a little update later on in the day yeah the heat pump's coming off and we're just just gonna have another day of solar thermal now from from midday for the rest of the day yeah it's all gone well okay another quick update later on in the day so you can see here we yeah we carried on getting quite good solar thermal input 2.3 kilowatts two and a half kilowatts two seven we had a little peak over here of three and a half the heat pump went off here half past 12 and uh, we've just been running off solar thermal again the heat pump's been switched off so yeah that's 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 the outside temperature there between two and what eight and a half or something seven and a half yeah we've mainly been running off solar thermal again it's all looking pretty good and it's now let's have a look it's now quarter past three so we know the sun from last time the sun's about to go in and we can tell that because our solar thermal is going down to 600 watts input so oh now i have to turn on the, the heat pump again uh, the heat pump's actually shut off at the moment because we're fixing some leaks and things uh, and just doing some remedial work after yesterday thankfully we had the the solar thermal which kept us heated while we we're doing that work. Uh, interestingly, underneath, here's the PV. So when the solar thermal was producing 3,500 watts, the PV, which is the same surface area, although uh, orientated not as favorably, was only producing 878 watts. So that's quite interesting, but uh, it means, you know, all the pumps and things like that for solar thermal were more than covered, which should have been less than 100 watts and, you know, a lot of our electrical equipment and stuff in here. Yeah, all very good. Oh, and also, although the solar thermal has dropped down to six, Six, seven, six, seven hundred watts, or whatever it is, roughly. The buffer store is still way up at 37 degrees, so we've still got a ton of energy in there ready to utilize. Thank you so much for coming and do this, really appreciate it. And it's like the whole thing's just blown my mind because I was looking forward to re, you know analyzing the data, but finding stuff that was wrong straight off the bat and already improving the efficiency mm. was, uh, I'm chuffed with, but I can see a lot of power here and where this can go. Thank you very much, much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. If you guys want to know more, go to openenergymonitoring.org. That's it, yeah. Tristan sells this stuff along with his partner, Glenn. He sells you all the kit so you can install it, monitor your stuff, tinker with your stuff, and get more efficiency as we have done today. Any Anything to add? No, that's it. I that's uh, great, really. I think, yeah, we've got some really good data just in the last few days, and it's been really interesting for me just to see, you know, a different valent heat pump, see what that's doing, and, and then see the interaction with the solar thermal. It's like, there's yeah. a lot to learn there, which is great. Yeah, and the, the heat pump, like the, the valence bit, it's impressive, isn't it? It's impressive bit of kit. Mm. Yeah, thanks so much yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, and we'll, we'll drop a link to Open Energy Monitor down in the description, as well as any other relevant links for today's show. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.